Okay, so nearly going for landing. We started with A, B, C, D, F, G, We are now with W. And then it's X, Y, Z. We're going for a landing. And uh, please don't miss out on that. Even get your friends here. And um, let us trust God that we will understand that what He wants to impart in our lives. Amen. Foundations to be laid with a word. Wise, wise virgin, have your time with God. Wise builders, understand how to the lay the foundations with the word that you not just hear the word like hearers do yes but in still many people heard they saw him they heard him but they went still in burning hell oh man if you have embraced god and you've received the word that god loves you so much you received the word and the biggest miracle happened in your life you became a child of god the, that's the biggest miracle that can happen through the word now we're talking today about work with word everybody say work with word you heard the word and you responded to the word you gave your life to christ and you became a child of god taken from darkness into his marvelous light are you with me that's the most amazing miracle that can take place in your life but I want to say, I think I said it some of it last week also. God didn't take nothing and created something from nothing into something. He never did that. He took words and with the words he created. In the beginning, God said and the word from his mouth created. There was light, boom, just like that. But light was a reaction to his word. So creation responds to the word of God. Because creation is a result of the word of God that was spoken. So you and I, we will be the result of some other word spoken. Because we can say, yes, God said, and there was light. God said, earth and sea separate. God said, Stars, heaven, sun, moon, it was there. The plants, the animals, it was there. And then he took mud with his hands and he created me and you. But, but before that, he first said. He looked at the sea and said, fish. He looked at the sky, he said, birds. He looked at the earth and said, plants. And from there, animals. Then he looked at himself. And he said, and he said, let us make man in our image amen are you with me and still today god is in that business let us me father son holy spirit work in peter's life work in john's life work in santi's life and create our image in them god is working today working today with the word and with the word oh spoken over your life he wants to create in you more of him less of yourself and i'm talking about less of the rubbish yourself because there's a unique yourself there's a precious you hidden in christ but that precious you hidden in christ life is hidden in christ you want to reveal want to reveal but the revealing will be through the word now the challenge is the problem is we're going to work with the word but the question whose word if you don't get the word in, if you don't walk with the word of God, you, you choose to work with some other word. You don't say, I want to walk with the word of rejection. I want to walk with the word of stress, the word of fear, the word of this, the word of justification. It will just happen. If you sit here and you choose not to work with the word that Holy Spirit is whispering in your ear. You hear the word through a demon. It's either the demon or the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, hello. There's no, no, not, not a third party involved. Light and darkness. That's all. So either I allow Holy Spirit to open it up. But if I don't allow Holy Spirit to op open it up. Some other spirit will say. You've heard that before. You know. Ah, that's the pastor speaking again. You know. He said this last week. Or whatever. I wonder how much he loved it himself. And, and all those other chokhas, they start to speak. And you work with the word against the word of God. 
Or you decide to say, I will respect the word of God. When I hear the word, I will lighten up. Something will happen in me. Because spirit was hovering over the face of the earth. There was nothing. Everything was void. It was void. Over your life, everything is void. And that area of emotions, that area of the hurt, the area of relationship, the area of your dreams, your destiny, your this, the area of your reasoning, it's void. It's just this nothing. And that mean, doesn't mean it's nothing. It, there's nothing from God in it. But God is faithful. He will never leave you, never forsake you. Therefore, the Spirit will be hovering over you. He will be there. He will be there. Until the moment the Spirit hears the word, then God said, How will he hear? He will hear your, from your mouth, from your heart, from your mind. That God says, and then he will respond. Because he will only respond to the word of God, Holy Spirit. Amen? That other demon, he cannot respond. Ish, he cannot, he cannot because when you're speaking the word under the guidance of the spirit, you're putting on the light. You don't fight the darkness, you put on the light. Light dries out darkness. You don't fight the fear, you bring in the love. The love fight the fear. Love will drive out all fear. You don't fight the anxiety, you bring in the peace that's beyond all understanding. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. But okay, you go and fight the battle and... God must stand there waiting for you to someday, somehow, allow him to do it for you. Because he wants to do it for you. What does he want to do? He wants to lay a feast table in front of you, in the presence of your enemies, where you will see how he is bringing you the victory. Where well, you have the feast table while he is dealing with the enemy. How many times, how many times, Old Testament, when they started to praise the Lord, God did this. When they started to praise the Lord and raise their voices, the walls falling, boom. Praise the Lord and all the enemy are scattered and they're killing one another. Ridiculous, pathetic. As long as Satan can keep the church quiet. As long as hell can keep you muff. You know what's the good word for muff? Um, dissatisfied okay as long as he can keep you that you are so busy with yourself that your mouth is closed unless your mouth can voice your opinion okay that's okay because your opinion is your God you will work with your opinion but you're not going to work with the Word of God not like that anymore in Jesus name we're going to work with the Word if you want to see the good works that God has prepared for you, if you want to see it having an eternal impact, an eternal value, eternal value through the works that God has prepared for you, then you must start with the word of God. If the word of God is not in the works, if the word is not from God is not in the works, it will have no eternal value. It must be burned up. It's a waste of a life. So get into the word, my brother, my sister, with the Holy Spirit and let it open up. You, then you work with the word. Amen. There we go. So is my word. Like the rain, like the snow coming down. That goes out of my mouth. Everybody, out. Out of my mouth. It's not so is my word. No. So is my word that comes out out of my mouth so where is his body you and me you and me so when the word through the spirit is coming from you it's like the word coming from the mouth of jesus christ himself because the word of god is perfect so when you speak the word under the guidance of the spirit what is coming forth is perfection are you here I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. We have a lot of huachachis and swaris and issues that we need to deal with. And step by step, more and more, we will have victory in Jesus' name. But my brother, perfection from your mouth. Heaven and earth will respond. When you bring the word with faith under the guidance of the Spirit, out. When God said, when you will say, let there be light in that school. There will be light. If you say, oh, the Bella Bell, the Bella Bell, and all those stuff is 
this, no, this is going to happen with the education, and that's going to happen, and that's, and hell is praising you for your words, because you speak exactly what they want you to speak. But if you say, even though, even though, even though they do this, oh, they're just going to rise. They're just going to rise. The Christian's going to stand up and rise up with boldness. Like when they did want to do all the chamors and the rabbis day with the Olympic Games, a lot of, lot of athletes. You remember? Confess and say, I want to give all the glory to Jesus. Praise God, man, for some Christians that stood up. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise the standard. God will raise the standard. But who and how through his church? Who? A certain company of people in his church. Not some spectators. Not the spectator Christian. But the Christian that went on the field with the captain Jesus Christ. Amen. So is my word that comes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish. Everybody say accomplish. What I desire and achieve, the purpose for which I send it, it will be successful. That achieve, the achievement, it will, the word of God will be successful. Success is rated when you evaluate yourself with the word of God. The only success is there, true success, if the word of God is in it. If the word of God is in your success. If in your success you can testify about what God did and how God is there and how God's wisdom helped you and how God corrected you and how God encouraged you and how God rebuked you and how you cut out certain stuff in your life. Are you with me? I could have pushed with the vision of that seven actor plot. I pushed, 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 and I would, uh, could have uh, bought a, a seven actor plot for 1.3 million and pay off uh, 20 years for that 1.3 million. Uh, the church will have to pay it off. But stay with God, stay with God, stay with God. And in my inaccuracies, inaccuracy of hearing God for the region, but inaccurate in saying that plan. Stay with God. Stay with God. And in the end, we got this for free. No, man. Stay with God. Amen. And even in your inaccuracies, when you stay with God, God will protect you and help you. Amen. But his word will be accomplished. His word will be successful. So he's sending forth his word and the word will work. Let's say the word will work. The question is, are you going to work with the word? That is the question. Are you going to work with the word? Because if you not work with the word of God, so you will work with the word of a demon. But you will work with a word. Okay. Are you with me? Next one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps, in the, in the steps with the wicked or stand in the way. Of sinners or take take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the lord and who meditates on his law day and night walk in the counsel of the wicked what is that counsel of the wicked guys it's something speaking in your head speaking in your heart the counsel is somebody speaking it is some word that is being put in your heart it's word and you will walk with the word of the wicked. Or you will walk with the word that is from God. But that word will be to your counsel. But there's one counsel. We call him the counselor, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you allow the counselor to open it up for you. I've said it here before. This is like a whole chemist, like a whole pharmacy. Hey? Very dangerous. When you just walk into the pharmacy in the front door and you just get in there and you just take some medicine. You get medicine, uh, you get over the, the tone bank. What's the tone bank? The counter. You get over the counter, you get some medicine. Okay. And there's some others. You better make sure you have a prescription from a doctor and then through the pharmacist that sign. Only then you will get it. Why? Because if you just walk in there and take whatever is there, schedule, schedule four, five, six, seven medicine, 
you're going to die from medicine. Before you're out, out of the pharmacy, you will be dead. But why? Will we go to the word? And we don't go with the prescription of the Holy Spirit. What he tells you, what must you look at today? And then you go out there and you are muff, you are tired. You don't want to do it. You don't want to get in the word again. Because you drank all these pills and you are more sick than ever before. Why? Because you didn't follow the prescription. So this is amazing medicine to your body, to your health, to your life. This is the medicine. But you don't touch this medicine without the prescription from the Holy Spirit. What he tells you, what to read, what to go with, what to study, what to meditate, what to memorize, what to focus on. I mean, how stupid will it be? No, never we do that uh, anymore. Uh, that, how stupid will it be that this guy will go into the pharmacy and he just took from everything that could be so amazingly for his benefit if he had any type of problem in his life. And also like minerals, they call it minerals and vitamins and all this stuff. But you're not going to get in there with, with a prescription. What a waste. What a waste. And before he's out there, he's sick, man. He's already sick. How many times you experience that the word can make you sick? Sometimes because I'm struggling with the sin, I don't want to get rid of the sin. Or sometimes because I hear what I want to hear and I allow certain things. I will drink certain medicine and I will not drink certain other medicine. I will start this, uh, um, what you call it, antibiotics uh, course of seven days, but I'm just going to do one and a half day, then I'm going to change to some other antibiotics uh, for two days, and then I'm going to change to other some freaky. But as I hear this nice sermon from this guy, say, oh, yeah, 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 and I took some of it, and then I, I, I like this other sermon from this guy, this guy. You hear from God where you must be, and then you stick to get up you do the whole course <laughs> are you here okay you see your neighbor he's sleeping just beat him up just smack him with love all in love then it's not sin okay good where are we walk in the council that's the word that you receive as counsel from the holy spirit i stand in the way of the sinner no, I stand in the way that is called the, the, the way. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. I stand in Christ. Christ in me, me in Christ. I am strategic. I'm standing in God's strategy, the way of God, not the way of the sinner. They say, I'm standing in the strategy of God. That means if you don't stand in the way that sinners take, the way that this, the world do it, the way that the world can think, the way that the, they will do it. Uh -uh. God is my strategy. God is my way. Then your life becomes strategic. It's because of a heavenly strategy that you are in that workplace, that you are in that school, that you are at that university, that you are in that relationship, hopefully in Jesus' name. Hello? So your life is supposed to become strategic if you allow the words of God to be your counsel. Then you will find the breakthrough, you will find the strategy, you'll find the way. Amen? In Him. But it's all about working with the word, working with the word, walking with the word, standing with the word, and then sitting in the company of mockers. No. Mockers, the ones that mock Christ. The ones, the, the base, basis of that is those who don't have respect for Christ. So those who use the name of the Lord in vain, you watch that movie, you are in a, people don't go to the movies anymore. Do they go to the movies? movies? Oh, now these days with all the technology, you, you are movie, movie, movie on your phone and laptop and wherever. But bottom line, and there's that thing. And the guy used the name of Jesus. You just stand up and say, yes, that's my Lord Jesus Christ. I praise him. I love him. Don't look at me now. <laughs> oh, man, go and do that. And you'll be surprised. 
you'll be surprised. There will be one or two or three Christians also that will cheer you. Or if somebody moo you or mock you, you must just say, yes, and he loves you too. And then you go and sit. You have a story to tell when you're an old man or an old woman to your grandchildren. No, man, don't look at me like that. I, uh, anybody w will be prepared to go and do it. You know, you find people, they want to stir some things. People with hachi uh, agendas, they go to a place to stir. Do you know that? Now that's like, I say we need to go to places and stir. You know, you go to the abortion clinic and don't say, you all going to burn in hell and your baby is going to be in heaven. Don't, don't do that. Say, praise God for children. That's what you say. Praise God for every child. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Are you here? Okay. You praise God for every child. Oh, oh no. what, what, what are you doing? We're praying against this clinic. No, no. We are, praying. we are just here to praise God because there's, there's children getting on the finishing line. They didn't have a long journey on earth. They only had a journey of three months or two months. But um, we praise God for them. We're just cheering them. For the journey. What a, what, a, what, a, what a waste that somebody stole from them. The long journey that they could have had on earth. But ask God for wisdom. For, uh, for wisdom. How to create something. How to do something. Amen. Okay. In the company of Marcus. But. 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 If they, that but is not happening. Then number one, two, three cannot happen. Whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Not I feel miserable because I feel condemned. Because I'm doing it wrong. And I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. But you choose to read the word because you like it. You need to find that your delight in the word. So like somebody reading a book. I didn't read books very much. I didn't like that anymore. A lot. But that you find a book and you. Some of you guys would read a book because you like reading the book. Even some people do it in holiday. Who, who likes reading a book? A very nice book. One, two, three, four, five. The rest just look more at movies and games. Okay. Okay. There's a song. I said, read the book. Don't wait for the movie. When you wait for the movie, it's too late. Read the book. Don't wait for the movie. <laughs> okay. When you read the book, you create the movie with the Lord uh, and let it, then it's not a horror movie okay or a thriller or a thriller what do you mean good yeah okay are you with me whose delight is in the law of the Lord and meditates on the Lord day and night oh you can meditate on your hurts you can meditate on negativity you can meditate on a lot of myth stuff you can meditate on what that guy did wrong to you you can meditate on your mistakes you can meditate on Meditate. It's more, it's more than memorize. Memorize is one point. When you memorize and you don't mesmerize your flesh, then it's not med meditation. Are you with me? Then you don't take it in your heart. It's just like that. Like the devil knows the word. He, he has memorized the word, if I can say like that. He knows the word. But it doesn't mesmerize his plans. Let's say memorize to mesmerize so it, it must mess up the devil's plan in your life when you meditate it must mess up the the plan from your flesh and your weakness and what hell and what the devil want to put against you then you are starting to meditate on the word you could start to take it in you start to love it you start to chase it treasure it amen let it be so let it be so but if you do that then you start to work with the word. You meditate on it, but you want to work with it. You want to work with it. So it becomes precious and you study it. Now it can be the counselor. The counselor can use the word because you studied it. You meditated on it. Then you come in a way, in a place, and you just know this is not God's strategy. This is not according to the word of God. This is not right. And you know, get out of that place. Or if you're in that place, bring the strategy of God into the place. If you get into the place and there's no strategy of God, but you believe you must be there, then you better bring the strategy of God in that place. 
Many things in education now. Hey, some things definitely not the strategy of God. But the strategy of God will be there for the new generation. If the children of God rise up, open their mouth, open their mouth and work with the word of God and speak for the word of God. The wisdom will be there. The wisdom of will be there. And those kids in that school that must learn a lot of chamors, a lot of rubbish, they say in their hearts, I want to be like that teacher. Some of you guys remember when you were at school, there was that one or two or three teachers in your life that had a certain impact. Hello? You were at school. Hello? How can I get them to wake up? Okay. There's nice food after the service. Okay. So what am I, what am I saying? Ah, oh, come on, guys. Start to enjoy the word. Get into the word. But let it become part of you. Let it become part of you. Amen? Then you can work with the word. You work with the one that is the most, 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 most successful. If you want to work with the one that is the most successful, and that is, you work with the word. Right, next one. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prosper. You had many times, uh, I heard people saying, whatever. And that means I'm just going to do nothing. Whatever, I will just have to do what they ask me to do. Okay, what a waste of a life, whatever, I will not even voice my opinion because it will not count anyway. Okay, feel miserable and sorry for yourself because you don't believe God can do a thing, you're not with God in it, or you decide, I'm going to work with God, but, each, each, each. but for that, I must be at the right place. This guy that walk in the council of the counselor, standing in the way called Jesus Christ, sitting in the seat with Christ in heavenly places. He's like what? He's the tree planted by the streams of water. Stream of water, that's the living council of the counselor. The Holy Spirit is like water. He's always fresh at your life. He's always there. He's always where you are. That river is there. That river is there. But you will stay with the river. You will stay with the freshness of his guidance. Amen planted with the streams of water and then yield his fruit in season leaves does not wither i'm just tired and when i'm tired i'm muff when i'm tired I'm, I'm withering you know you can be tired and then you are refreshed in god's presence you just run to his presence amen are you with me but when the leaves start to wither it's because you allowed some other sickness some other thing some other hoha into your system and you must deal with that thing okay because in Christ, your, your leaves will be there. It will be there, right through. The yield is fruit in season. What does that mean? One day, you can be nice. The other day, you can beat up the guy. No. There's not a season to beat up and a season to love. No. No. Look in Revelation 24-7. 12 months out of 12 months, the f there's a fruit on the trees planted next to the throne of God with a river of water come through. There's a comparison with that prophetically in Revelation. But the bottom line is, in season means tomorrow. You walk into the day, it's a wonderful day, and then this one guy, he just come and he put that chachi attitude on you. And he just said this thing. Now that is the season for the fruit of patience. Yields its fruit in season the season the moment when you can flip the moment that you can say something wrong but then you choose to bless instead of choose to curse that's in season so there's a season tomorrow for the fruit of patience the evening for the fruit of what's the other word uh, forgiveness then the day after that, this guy, guy is doing exactly the same. He is doing the thing again. Oh, it's a season for the fruit of grace. <laughs> okay. Are you here? So at different stages, there's a season where that fruit is necessary to be taken from you. And they eat and taste that the Lord is good through your life. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see, because you present the fruit at the right time. Even to yourself, even to yourself. 
when you me you're feeling miserable about stuff. Be careful when you're tired. Be careful in that season, the right fruit you take from the word. Amen. Whatever they do, prosperous. Whatever you do, it will be successful. What does that mean? You're going to be perfect. You're just going to float through life. No, not at all. Whatever you do will prosper. Why? You're going to make a lot of mistakes, man. I'm still going to make a lot of mistakes. But why will it prosper? Because I know the way to the cross. I know through the blood to say, God, forgive me. And I forgive myself. And I forgive those. And I will ask them for forgiveness so that I can carry on. And then God will do a perfect work in and through your life. And it will be accomplished. And afterwards you will brag and say, it's only because of the grace of God that this work could prosper. I had to run to God so many times. I made 19 mistakes in this whole setup of my business or this thing that I wanted to do. But what, what I did, it prospered because I knew how to enter the throne of grace through the blood with my life. Amen? Come on, man. You will prosper, but only through the word of the cross, We're through the blood of Christ. You can have victory through the blood tomorrow is a new opportunity let's say through the blood tomorrow is a new opportunity so you respect the blood amen next one he sends forth his word and heals them and rescue them from the pit and destruction god come and rescue us from this government or rescue us from this education system rescue us from this whatever you want to call whatever one you want to call there's no fight with any with that guy or with government it's your war is not against flesh and blood you do that that's pathetic man you are not there to judge you're not there to point a finger you are there, there to find out what how must the church position itself in all of this where must i make known the voice of god because i'm going to work with the word of god amen he sends forth his word and he healed them you send forth word and you curse people not anymore yeah world health organization they are like this the russians are like this the the israelites the jews they are like this and the, all the gaza guys they are like that okay all demons are clapping his head yes let it be so according to that christian oh you say you better make sure you speak the word of god god have mercy on all of them they're all precious and god they're going through trauma raise up your church in that place lord help us help us let our prayers be there in that place let them see give them dreams give them dreams beyond to the church that had to be ambassadors of christ the church had to bring the gospel to the nations and show them the grace of god forgive us for not doing our job lord that's why the people can just kill one another because they don't know the gospel because we didn't bring it to them it's first of all the fault of your church lord forgive your church in israel in gaza because we all have our own agenda in the past never in the future again in jesus name we're going to wake up the church Amen. So let it be so. Just wake up from your own agenda. Okay, great. Send forth this word and heals them and rescue them from the pit. Why you find the rescue from the pit? You need some rescuing from certain things in your life. He wants to do it, but through his word. His word will rescue you from the pit. His word will rescue you. But then you have some job to do. Get in the word. You're sitting in the pit and then there's this lifeline, this, this tow, this rope being thrown down. And you're sitting next to the rope. Somebody must take me, get me out of this pit. Somebody must come down and, and carry me out of this pit. You call that a comedy. Your prayer. Because there's a lifeline for you. And that's the word of God. You bind yourself with the word of God and the word will carry you through amen please man all right next one 
These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart, not just in your head. On your heart, bring it close to you. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. That's all the way. That's like somebody like your granny, some grannies, they just... With the word and the word and the word and you feel like okay granny maybe not one of your grannies but um you see i think i judged my mother she always had this long sermons and i was thinking, oh Lord. when i would phone her mom how are you i just want the summary <laughs> maybe i've judged them now you see now he's long sermons <laughs> what am i saying Ach, no, man. When you know when you're full of the word, when you're excited about the word, you will do it this way. But if you don't know how the word must live in you, and when you open your mouth, the word will come out under the guidance of the Spirit. But if you're so full of bitterness, when you lay down, you are bitter. When you rise up, you are bitter. There's an issue when you sit in the house. There's an issue when you walk with people. There's an issue. There's always some other issue. Now, let that thing live with you. Go and sleep with that thing. Go and rise with that thing. <sighs> that feeling of rejection. That feeling of, they always do this against me. Poor me. You don't say poor me. But that feeling sorry for yourself more. And how life owes you something. Because somebody must give to you before you can break through. Heaven gave you everything. What rubbish. That if somebody don't give me something, then I can do nothing. That's deception. No, we're not going to go that way anymore. Amen. This is the biggest legacy that you can give your children. If you want your, your children to receive an inheritance, it's not two million in the bank. It's this. This is the definition of the world. Oh, the world's going to be read after the death of your very, 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 very rich auntie. And she loved you very much. And you are there to hear the world. With a nice attitude, but from your auntie. But you know, after the death of Christ, even though he has risen, after his death, there's inheritance, there's a will, there's a will to be read. But if you cannot even read the will of what is the benefit of his death, and you're not even there to read the will, and you could have received so much, but make sure that your children and your grandchildren, they know the will. They know what was given to them as an inheritance through the death of the Son of God. Are you here? Great. Next one. Stand firm then with a belt of truth around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness, with a feet fitted for the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. With. Next one. In addition to the, the shield of faith, that you can deal with the flaming arrows, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, that's the Word of God. We talked about this 3,079 times already. But what I'm saying is, you must work with the Word. If you have the whole armor of God on, but you, now you have the armor of God on, and you took your whole life just to put on the armor. Okay, there you died. Just before you got the whole armor on. Yay! But why did you try to put on the armor if you're not going to do anything with it? Are you with me? And you struggle your whole life just to put on the armor. Okay, because the helmet of salvation, remember we did this? So helmet of salvation is the word of God. You take every thought captive to the thought of God. You align your thoughts. You break down the strongholds with the word of God. You, your mind must be renewed. To think the thoughts that he is thinking. Hello? My thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. God says. Why? Because then he said, I will send the rain. No. I will send the snow. No. I will send my word. I will send my word. And my word, when my word comes, then your thoughts will become my thoughts. And my thoughts will become your thoughts. My will be, will be yours. Your will be, will be mine. It will be father and son. It will be father and daughter. And we will do it together. But first you must acknowledge that your thoughts against God's thoughts are terrible. Horrific. 
freaky. But if you cannot acknowledge that, you don't need to find God's thoughts because your thoughts are so precious and good and so whatever. But if you realize my thoughts and God's thoughts are not the same, and that's why God said, then I sent for the word and my words. My thoughts will accomplish. What I thought must happen, it will happen. But this time, it's not I had a thought and then I said, let there be light. I had a thought and then I said, let us make man. This time, I had a thought and I want you to read my thoughts and then you must say, let there be light in the school. Let there be light in this university. Let there be light in Le Fontaine. This time, life and death in the power of the tongue and that you need to use it as your example from your father, the example from your God, the example from your master, Jesus Christ. Words under the guidance of the Spirit. Amen. So we have all of this. The helmet of salvation, so that it's God's thoughts above your thoughts. The bare breastplate of righteousness so that your heart is protected because the thoughts in your heart is a lot of Huara thoughts the origin of life from your heart treasure your heart more than anything else how with a word with a word in your heart that's her thought is coming and says you are not good enough and, oh, oh, but the word also says you speak to your heart are you with me? The word says how many times? And David spoke into his heart. He spoke in his heart. He said in his heart. Many guys, they said in his heart. As you are sitting here, something is speaking in your heart. And it's either the spirit of God or a demon. When the word of God is there, hey, demons are there. Because they, now, that is the moment of truth. Truth. <laughs> Or the moment of deception. The moment of truth is they must make sure that you don't take the truth. Because you're going to be set free. And when you know the truth. Uh, when he comes to whatever. You will say. It is also written. It is also written. It is also written. It is also written. And then the devil must leave you. He, didn't, he went to the son of God. He was there. But he had to leave. Because Jesus said. It is also written. It is also written. It is also written. And he was too protected by the word of God. He was the living word of God. He was too... The devil left him. I'm not saying the devil will leave you forever. Not at all. But you want to discourage the devil? Come to know the word. Come to know the word. That you can just naturally say, it is also written. It is also written. You know? Not get into a fight with the devil. But you just know the word. And when you open the mouth, what you speak is hurting his ears. Okay, last no, respect of righteousness, the belt of truth, belt of truth, it's close to your, close to you, you put it close to you, the belt will not break, because it's the truth, it will keep you, it will keep you, amen? Then we set the shoes for the readiness of the gospel, shoes with the word, where you go, the word goes. Where you go, the strategy from heaven goes. Where your feet is going, when you open your mouth with the word of God, people start to understand still awake okay. so, so you are still here get into that place because when you walk and you walk into that place people fear because you have this dominant remorse in your life or when you go into the place oh here comes trouble who had that some other auntie or some other uncle or somebody oh and you, you look at them oh, I think we're gonna be in trouble again no when they see you, they say, oh, I think they're going to be strategy from heaven again. I think we're going to see now some wisdom because that guy is coming. I think we're going to hear from God because that guy is coming. We're going to ask him that we pray. And, and, and he must tell us what he's, what he's seeing or what he's hearing from God. What, what does he feel? But we're not going to say like that. We're just going to say, so what do you feel? What do you feel about this? But in the heart, they hope that you've heard from God, that you spend time with the Lord. And when you open your mouth, you're going to say what God is bringing as a solution. But they're only going to say, so what do you say about it? <sighs> Are you with me? That's the feat. You come with a strategy. You come with a solution. You come with that, what is from God. Amen. Are you with me? This, this 
shield of faith. The shield of faith is with word, like we said. And whenever the enemy comes and he puts some stuff against you, you just keep the word there. And the arrows can come. The enemy's arrows can come. And why you can get so hurt? Why you are so easily oversensitive? Why are you so easily discouraged? Why are you so easily? Because somewhere you didn't pick up the shield of faith. No condemnation, but get to believe the word of God. Shield of faith. It's how you, how you get into the word, and the word creates faith in you. And because you have now faith in the word, you put it out there. You don't fight with that. You just put out the shield of faith. Are you with me? And the sword of the spirit. That's the sword of the spirit. So that you can cut and divide that what is from hell, that what is from heaven. In your life that you just know this is from heaven this is from hell god will help you are you still here okay sort of the spirit you don't touch this word without the spirit you don't touch this word without the spirit are you with me they say i will not touch the word without the spirit because you're walking around with a very dangerous, very, very, very two edges, sharp, sharp, sharp sword. You're going to cut people into pieces. You're going to cut yourself. Word is very dangerous without the spirit. Don't handle it without the spirit. Even in your head, in your heart, right now. Right, next one. And pray. While you do this, while you get the armor on, everywhere, head, heart, truth wherever while all of this is happening and pray in the spirit on everybody say all occasions everybody say all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all <laughs> the lost people okay <laughs> Are you with me? This is like nagging prayer person, you know? This is like some old aunties. Praise God for them. But this is saying, when you want the word to work, when you want to work with the word, work with the word, that you are finding yourself in the word, then you are in the armor of God when you are in the word. This must happen with the power of prayer the whole time. This must happen with the Holy Spirit the whole time. So when you get into the Word and when you're busy with the armor, putting on the armor, nothing can happen with a, this connection with heaven. This spirit connection with heaven. That's prayer. You have the spirit connection with heaven the whole time. And that's why you can put on this armor. You have this spirit connection with some demon, with some Hwara, with some rubbish belief that you can speak to ancestors, but in many, but in all the ways, it's actually just demons. Because you cannot speak to the ancestors. Don't be deceived. Hello? But if there's this connection with this thing, you're going to put on that armor. You have this connection with your bitterness or with your anger or with your rejection or somebody owes you you have that connection you will put that helmet you will think the thoughts of that rubbish you will have the heart of that rubbish you will walk the walk of bitterness you will have close as the belt of of truth will be the belt of deception of bitterness and all this negativity but you will put on the armor of the one that you're connected to but this of prayer all the time right through every occasion everywhere this prayer is stay connected to the right source and then you will put the armor of that source you will put it on you are here okay next one the word sharper than the two edges sword penetrating dividing the line of soul and spirit exposing and sifting analyzing judging every thought purposes is that the last one next one all right wait penetrating the, the dividing line of soul and spirit i know we said it a lot but there's a few new guys that i believe we must know it so the word can tell you what's the difference between soul and spirit even people in psychology many don't understand that one about that human being body soul spirit you know that huh? Body, soul, spirit. What is a baboon? 
body and soul. But body, soul, spirit. That's the difference between human being and animal. Human being have spirit. Baboon don't have spirit. You can take a chimpanzee and you can teach some animals some stuff that some human beings don't even know. So intellectually you can have some of these animals that can do a lot of things that maybe some humans cannot do. But there's one thing. Even in that man whose brain is, he was born but he's, the brain is like gone. He's 40 years old, but he cannot say a word. He's trying to, but he's just, uh, uh, you know, in his spirit, he can worship God. He has a spirit. And that man has a spirit that makes him a human being. While that animal that can even the parrot can speak. That man cannot speak, but the parrot can speak. But the parrot does not have a spirit. You are a human being because you have a spirit. And the word of God will tell you what is from the spirit that makes you a human being loving God. And what is from the soul that is rubbish. Like every animal can have a soul. Soul that is your thoughts, your feelings, your personality, your will. But in your spirit is God's will, God's purpose, God's character, God's way of thinking, God's feelings. That's in your spirit when you are reborn. Amen. Right. Next one. For I fail to practice the good deeds I desire to do, but the evil deeds that I do not desire to do, they do that what I am ever doing. What I do not desire to do are what I am doing. I'm doing the wrong things. Next verse. Now, if I do what I do not desire to do, it is no longer I doing it. Oh, it is not myself that acts. But the sin, not the sin, it's the sin which dwell within me, operating in my soul. So I'm not to blame. It's not me doing the sin anymore. <laughs> it's not me doing the wrong things. Oh, it's the sin that dwells in me. Not my fault, it's the sin. You, your spirit, cannot do sin because your spirit is perfect. When you gave your life to Christ, everything became new. Became new. You're a new creation. Where? In your spirit. Perfect. Perfect spirit. But in your soul, there's some other squattering happening there. Illegal immigrants. <laughs> But you brought them there, you brought them there, you invited them there, you brought them there to destroy. To destroy. But the property is the property of God, it's not even your property. If you think you are your property, you are the squatter in your own house. Eh? You are the squatter in your own house when you think it belo your, your life belongs to you. You gave it to Christ. He is the owner, he has the title deeds. Don't be a squatter. In a place that belongs to God. You're still here. Don't be a squatter in the place that belongs to God. Okay? You cannot do that. You have respect for his property. You have respect for his house. And that's your life. Amen. Amen. Now if it's the, the sin that dwells in me, what's now the problem? The problem is... Why is the sin so dwelling in you? Because you allowed the sin to dwell in you. So the problem is not, first of all, you do the wrong things. The first problem is you allow the sin to dwell in you. Because if you love God, you will obey Him. The Father will love you. And He will come and make His home in you. So sin is not in, at home with you. Bitterness is so at home because you will listen to every word that bitterness tells you. A, a reason, your own reasoning is so at home with you. Especially when you word, hear the word of God. You're so quickly irritated. You're so quickly tired. You're so quickly this. You're so quickly that. Those hojas, those rubbish, you must drive them out. You're at the soccer game once again. Or the rugby game. In that place. And it's 30 minutes. There's still 10 minutes to go. And, and there could be a, a try. Or there could be a goal. Or there could be a what? All those stuff. And... Oh.
but you cannot concentrate more than 30 minutes. So you're just irritated looking all over the place, but you're not looking at the team with the ball, even though it's a moment of impact that can happen. Oh, because you are so tired. <laughs> no, Nobody is so stupid. But why does it happen with the word? Because he's a true enemy. They want to make sure that you will not have your breakthrough. That you will not win. You will not win this game today. Uh -uh. So you must be irritated. You must be tired. You must be frustrated. You must, your thoughts are in different places. Who, who saw that before? That uh, then when there's a sermon or when you read the word, you can't, it's just like there's not a focus. Go let somebody pray for you because you're intimate with demons. The word says don't have fellowship with demons. Are you with me? And then you're going to be set free. Amen. Okay. So, the sin cannot dwell in me if God is dwelling more in me. But the word, the, word, the Bible says, I cannot go within in it now. The word must dwell richly in me. There's the sin dwelling in me. But the Bible says, the word must richly dwell in me. There's a richness of the word that what is you treasure in your life is the word that's the word dwelling richly richly in you means like i treasure it i treasure the word i give it special place special space in my life then my, the, more and more my problem is solved because light in me will drive out the darkness darkness cannot dwell in me because light is dwelling in me Love is dwelling in me that drives out the fear. Peace is dwelling in me that drives out the anxiety and the stress. You bring the word in. And then it's not the chamors that devil can vomit in you. That will dwell in you. That just make you, your soul sick. But then it will be from God. And it will be the word that was sent out to heal you. And bring you into a life that is precious. Are you still here? You're with me. For the word that God speaks is alive, alive. Everybody say alive. Full of power. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Why are you going to be effective? Why do you have energy? Oh, I'm so tired. It's okay. You did some stuff and no problem. You don't feel condemned. But somewhere you better get into the word. Because actually your real strength is through the word and the spirit. Eagle, like we said last week, I think, I don't know. For those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. Even young men, young women, they fall, they faint. But those who wait on the Lord, those who jump into the word, they will renew their strength. The eagle that is old, go and sit. Some eagles, that's what they say, what happened. And then this old eagle, the feathers are out. You know, some feathers are not there anymore. <laughs> okay. And then they sit there and this eagle, they chop off the beak and they sit there. They pluck out first all the feathers before they chop off the beak, I think. And then uh, they just sit there. They just sit there. For those who wait on the Lord as their eagle knows the principle of weight and when the feathers is grown out and the beak is out there that the youth of that eagle is totally totally restored now god come through the prophet and say those who wait on the lord as the eagle oh man may god help you and show you how to do that amen then you will operate man you will have energy. You will be effective. You will be active in from your spirit. Not just active when there's a soccer ball or a this or a that or an issue or something to watch or a lady that you so like or a guy that loves you or this thing or that thing or you got this 300,000 rand and some of you, you're excited. What are you going to do with it now? Be excited, yes. But make sure that the word excites you more. We are growing into that. But that's what's going to happen. Work with word. Everybody say work with word. And let the word richly dwell in you, my brother, my sister. And it will accomplish what it was sent for. Where you are being sent, that is because of heaven sent you. Because the word in you is alive, is alive. It will not return void to God. Amen. God come and bless every man, woman in this place. I pray that they will find you.
find you like never before. While your eyes are closed and you focus on God, if you need to make right with God this morning, you need to receive that salvation. I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you just where you are sitting. You need to make right with God this morning. See the one, I see the other one. Yes, to make right with God. Just pray, everybody pray with us. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I surrender my whole life. Forgive me for walking away. I come back to you, Lord. Receive me as your child, Lord. Jesus Christ, I accept you as Lord and Savior in every area of my life. Thank you that you will never leave me, never forsake me. Thank you that I can be your child. I turn my back on every demon that wanted to destroy my life. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Fill me with your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.